Hi everyone. Um, I wanted to give a quick update um, and kind of my plans going forward with this particular channel. Um, about two weeks ago, be two weeks ago on Wednesday, I tripped and fell. Um, just tripped over my iPad cord, trying to get up from bed to go do something. Didn't realize my foot was caught in the cord. Fell forward reached out my right arm to catch myself, actually caught the footboard of my bed, which popped my right shoulder out and completely dislocated it. And then I fell over on my left knee, got a horrible rug burn. I'm laying there on my side in the fetal position, screaming. Um, my kids called 911, the ambulance came, they had to give me fentanyl just to get the pain to the point that they could get me up had to give me more in the ambulance so I could tolerate the ride to the ER. This is the fourth time in 31 years that I have dislocated the shoulders. I don't play sports, so it's anything, you know, like overhand if I'm going to swing or, or something, you know, like that. Certain movements, um, I've, you know, it was far more benign movements that popped it out the other two times. The last time was 10 years ago. I went to an orthopedic surgeon. He said, you know, this is the third time. It's up to you, but usually we would recommend surgery. But he said, you can do physical therapy. Well, my kids were 10 years younger, so now they're teens, and then they weren't. And I opted to do physical therapy because the surgery is pretty extensive you are your arms in a sling for four weeks and you are completely unable to do basic tasks and all of that it's it's pretty extensive um so i'm kind of dealing with shoulder issues and upcoming surgery in the middle or on top of my intractable migraines my fibro my back pain um, you know, insomnia, depression, anxiety, you know, all the list of things that I deal with. Some of it causes me daily chronic pain. I'm dealing with this too. And I went to one orthopedic surgeon who's fantastic, but he said, this is not my specialty. So he's sending me to a, another surgeon who specializes or does more shoulder dislocation re, uh, surgeries. So I'm got a lot of doctor's appointments this week, but Wednesday I go for the um, Arthur Graham MRI that they can shoot, shoot dye into the joint and stuff to see exactly what is damaged, how much damage there is, because this has been going on for like 31 years and multiple dislocations, what all do they got to fix? Then on Monday the 19th, I go to this other specialist surgeon who will look at the MRIs, look at the ER x-rays, and make a decision based on what she sees as to how we're going to proceed with the surgery. Can it be done arthroscopically or does it need to be done in an open procedure because of the extent of the damage? Don't know that yet. Um, so I think I'm going to do vlog updates or video updates maybe a few times a week. Um, for the most part, I don't really care to blog or vlog. I don't want to have to keep turning my camera on at multiple points throughout the day and then compile all of that and do a bunch of editing. I don't have the energy for that. My um, average pain level is a 7 pretty consistently and that puts me in bed. There are short times and that's primarily migraine pain. Um, sometimes the migraine pain is a little bit better but the fibro pain is worse and or my spine pain is worse. So I kind of accumulate my pain level based on all of the pain that I have, not just one pain condition. Right now, um, because I did have to, I took a muscle relaxer in an Ativan earlier because my shoulder was hurting so bad. And of course, it's snowing, so my fibro and my migraine pain is bad. My back is, it was aching a little bit, but 
my shoulders and my migraine is probably the worst of all the pain today and um, so my pain now is down a little it's maybe like a five so I'm able to do a video it's one of the reasons why I don't do videos regularly on my channel because I'm usually in too much pain I just I, you know the picking up a camera and showing you that I'm in pain when I wouldn't be coherent enough to talk to you you know or give you an update you know it's every, if every updates I'm in pain talk to you later that's not really very exciting um, but I do have several things coming up and my life is going to get really busy here real quick because I have two I have three teenagers still at home I have six children three of them are grown and married got their own houses and stuff I have four grandchildren and then I have my son will be 19 on the 19th and he was born in 1999, so that's kind of cool. But he turns 19, and he's actually a senior this year because we started him a little bit later um, in kindergarten because he just needed that extra year. And then my daughter, who is just um, 18 months behind him, she's also a senior. She's 17. She'll be 18 in July. So I've got two kids that are graduating in May and doing the college thing in the fall and there's a senior trip before that then there's prom then there's graduation and I've got several things that I have to do to prepare for all of those things specifically the senior trip but then I'm trying to get everything done and I'm probably going to have my shoulder surgery in June after the kids are out so they're going to be here to help me I get plenty of lead time to my son and daughter-in-law because I will I would be watching their two children, Jude who's eight and B who's three, for the summer when Jude's out of school. But they can find somebody else to watch him the two days a week I watch him. I watch B during the school year on Mondays and Fridays, and I have Jude on days that they don't have school, which would include the summer. <clears throat> so they'll make other arrangements so I can completely recover from the surgery based on my surgeon's recommendations and how limited I'm going to be. And I'll have my teens here to help all day and night. And then my husband would be here in the mornings. He works at night. So, um, and I'm also found a pain management doctor who was willing to do ketamine infusions outpatient at the hospital. My insurance regularly would cover ketamine infusions inpatient. So my pain management doctor has put in for a medical review to try to get them to cover it outpatient. We're still waiting. It seems like it's a very long process and I'm not sure if it's the insurance company or my doctor's office, maybe a little bit of both. Um, but at this point, I don't anticipate starting that anytime soon. I, you know, if I could get it started before my shoulder surgery, that would be good. Maybe I can convince the, um, the surgeon or to have the anesthesiologist use ketamine as my anesthesia. I'm not really sure because this surgery, arthroscopic, is it like two to three hour surgery. I'm going to assume that the open surgery is probably slightly longer because they've got to do more stitching and it's a little more in depth. Um, and then I would spend the night in the hospital if I had open. So I'm kind of curious to see which one the doctor wants to do. But I don't know if I was doing ketamine. Certainly... The first week after surgery where I just had all this anesthesia, I wouldn't need ketamine, hoping they can use it for my anesthesia for the surgery, but I'm not sure about getting treatments leading up to the surgery. Don't know yet. I'm not really holding that hope on that one. So that's kind of my plan is to update, you know, two, three times a week, just this is what's going on. This is the hard part of living life when there's certain things that you 
absolutely have to do. You cannot delegate certain things or you've delegated out and maxed out the person you can delegate to and you just have to step up whether you feel well or not. And that's the hard part because for the most part, I am bedridden. I can get up and walk around the house. Um, clearly I trip. I'm not really careful. There's many times throughout the day that I get up and I lose my balance and I'm grabbing onto a wall and I'm just standing there waiting for the world to stop spinning and waiting for me, my balance to kind of level out because if I took another step, I would fall and I do have osteoporosis in my low spine as well as um, osteoarthritis and so falling especially if I land on my butt can fracture my spine falling and catching myself with my arm could dislocate my shoulder again and falling on my knees, which I have done quite a bit. For some reason, I seem to land on my knees. My knees, you know, are just getting all banged up. And I'm, you know, concerned of... They're not getting broken or anything, but I'm falling like I got a bad rug burn two weeks ago. But most of my other falls, I'm slipping and falling and landing on my knees on hard tile. Um, so... You know, I try to take it easy because my balance and my in the dizziness and wooziness is can get significant. Um, just seem clumsy and not able to just I don't know, my dexterity and things is, is getting worse, which according to my neurologist is a progression of my migraine disease. And of course, I don't sleep really well most of the time, even with Ambien to help me sleep. Um and fibro and, and all the pain and just the migraine, you know, getting up and walking makes that so much worse. But it, you know, getting up and moving around like several times a day, I get up, the dogs need to go out, refill my water, give me something to eat, just to get up and walk around the house, you know, so I get blood flowing to my legs and, you know, get up and move. It makes my migraine pain much worse, but it actually helps with arthritis pain and some fibro pain to just move a little bit because everything can get stiff so but you know for the most part I don't I don't cook I don't clean I don't do laundry and I don't grocery shop um, if I have a day where I feel better like my pain is a four or five and four is about as low as I go um, and I have that moment where my pain's low, I usually will go and, you know, maybe wash my hair or grab, you know, like a Swiffer duster and, you know, dust the living room or dust my bedroom or something, you know. Um, I try to do something when I can. It's not nearly enough, but, you know, I do what I can do and my husband, thankfully, will kick in and help do the rest and, you know, my kids are pretty good about keeping the main areas clean. They've got their own rooms, their own bathrooms, so they take care of those. So, anyway, that's the plan to kind of go through what it means to have a major surgery when you have a an acute, at this point, I'm not sure if it's chronic since it's been 31 years, but it's only been four episodes even though there's damage and I've had to alter my life and things for, certainly for the last 10 years to prevent another dislocation. And it was just a traumatic fall that triggered it, not something else. So, you know, at this point, I guess it's an acute problem that's going to require surgery and how that plays into daily chronic pain and illness and, you know, all the exhausting things you've got to do to prepare for that and for a busy time for our family with graduations and whatnot and it's going to be really interesting to document what it's going to be like for four weeks after I have surgery and my arms in the sling and it is my right arm my right shoulder and I'm right-handed so that ought to be interesting so I will I will document that and um, 
we'll see how that goes and see if, you know, if anybody's interested in, in watching that or seeing that from a middle-aged woman who's dealing with, you know, multiple things and, you know, I'm at an age, especially with my health conditions, where falling can start causing, you know, more issues, um, maybe more injuries on top of chronic stuff. So anyway, we'll see. But that's my update. Um, surgery's coming. I will post on the 19th for sure after I meet with the surgeon to give more details on what the exact procedure they're going to do for me and the extent of the damage. Um, and we'll go from there. So I hope you had a great day and I will talk to you soon.